All right, welcome to our unit on the mole. Today's topic is Avogadro's number and the mole. Lesson 104, your objectives are as follows. To understand and become familiar with Avogadro's number. To understand the concept of the mole and mole quantity. To understand the relationship that exists between Avogadro's number, atomic mass, and the mole. All right, for your quick write. Your pencil uses graphite, which is made up of pure carbon to write with. How many carbon atoms do you think are in 12 grams of graphite or carbon? Okay, remember, atoms are small. How many items make up a dozen? How many items make up a half dozen? And how many items are in two dozen? Okay, and a little review here. Write the following number in scientific notation. All right, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on. All right, so the mole and Avogadro's number. In 1811, an Italian scientist by the name of Avogadro Amedio discovered that a mole of atoms is equal to the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We call this the mole. So in other words, one mole is equal to this number. Okay? We call 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Avogadro's number. Okay, it is an incredibly huge number. So we write it in scientific notation. Simply put, the mole represents a number or quantity. Just as a dozen represents the number 12, the mole represents this incredibly huge number. And remember, atoms are tiny, so it's going to be a big number. So while a dozen eggs will make a nice omelet, a mole of eggs will fill up the o Earth's ocean 30 million times over. Okay, so what is Avogadro's number? Question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so the mole. The mole is defined as the amount of a substance that is equal to Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is the amount of atoms found in 12 grams of carbon-12. Okay, the mole is an important unit of measurement in chemistry because it gives us a way to convert between numbers of atoms or molecules to a more convenient method of measurement, such as grams or liters. Let's look at a one mole sample of carbon aka graphite here. So we have one mole of carbon right here. Remember, it's a quantity or amount. Okay, A one mole sample of carbon contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Okay, So in this sample of carbon are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Okay, Or consider a one mole sample of aluminum here. Okay. A one mole sample of aluminum contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd aluminum atoms. So in this one mole sample of aluminum, guess what? There are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd aluminum atoms. Okay. And then finally, let's consider a one mole sample of copper. All right. So if this is all copper right here, okay, it contains, you guessed it, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. So one mole of any substance contains this many atoms, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So the point is, one mole sample of anything contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that substance. Okay. So remember, the mole is a quantity, just like a dozen is a quantity. Only the mole is an extremely large quantity to represent extremely small particles. And in this case, these small particles are atoms or molecules. Okay. All right, so what is the mole for your notes? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Make sure you write these examples and conversion factors down for your notes. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on this. I'm going to move on. All right, so molar mass. Atomic mass is useful in chemistry when it is combined with the mole concept. Okay, an interesting relationship arises between the mass of an element and the amount of atoms it contains. Molar mass is defined as the mass in grams of one mole of an element or compound containing 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. Okay, so for example, let's come back to our one mole sample of carbon here. Recall that it, okay, has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon in it. Okay, well as it turns out, 
If you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, then you also have a sample of carbon equal to the atomic mass of carbon, 12.01 grams of carbon. Okay, so if you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, then you also have 12.01 grams of carbon, which is the atomic mass seen on the periodic table. And you also have, right, one mole of carbon. Okay, in other words, one mole of carbon contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms and has a mass of 12.01 grams. Okay, so let's look at our one mole sample of aluminum again. Okay. A one mole sample of aluminum contains, if you recall, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd aluminum atoms and has a mass of 26.98 grams. Okay. Look on your periodic table. That is also the atomic mass of aluminum. So if you have a one mole sample of aluminum, it will weigh 26.98 grams. Okay, and it will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd aluminum atoms. Okay, finally, let's consider our one mole sample of copper. A one mole sample of copper contains, okay, if you recall, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. And if we put a mole of copper on a scale, it'll have a mass of 63.54, or a mass equal to the atomic mass, okay, of copper. Okay. So, for your notes, what is the molar mass of an element? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer down here goes on the right-hand side. Please write the examples down because they'll make sense here coming up. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so mole problems. Mole problems involve dimensional analysis. Okay, and if you recall, dimensional analysis is a mathematical system that uses conversion factors to move from one unit of measurement to a different unit of measurement. Okay, remember, in dimensional analysis, units are more important than numbers. By canceling units, you will arrive at the correct answer. If you remember, there are certain steps we must follow. Okay, start, step one, start with what the problem gives you. Okay. Step two, what are the conversion factors? You need to set up the problem so that the conversion factors cancel, okay? Which is step three, set up the calculation so that the units cancel, okay? And step four, okay, solve the problem, all right? So consider the following problem. How many grams are in two moles of aluminum? All right. So start with what the problem gives you. What's given in the problem? Okay. Two moles of aluminum. All right. Step two. What are the conversion factors? Well, we know one mole of aluminum weighs 26.98 grams. We also know one mole of aluminum has that many aluminum atoms. Avogadro's number, right? And 26.98 grams of aluminum also has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd aluminum atoms. Okay, so we want to plug these into our problem here so that our units cancel. Okay, which brings us to step three. Okay, step three, set up the calculation so the units cancel. All right, I have moles of aluminum here. I'm going to need down here moles of aluminum. All right, so... And the question is asking for grams. So I need a conversion factor that involves grams and moles. So I'm probably going to want that one. Okay. So one mole of aluminum I know has a mass of 26.98 grams of aluminum. My moles of aluminum cancel. I'm left with grams, which is exactly what the question is asking for. Okay. Okay, so now step, last step, which is solve the problem. Okay, so 2 times 26.98 divided by 1 gives me 53.66 grams of aluminum. Okay, all right, now it's your turn to practice. Okay, so practice. How many grams are in a 7.6 mole sample of iron? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on this. Okay, when you're ready to see the answer, hit play.
All right, so now we're converting, okay, moles into grams. So let's use our steps once again. Start with what the problem gives you, okay, and it gives us 7.6 moles of iron. All right, step two, what are the conversion factors? Well, the question involves moles and grams. So I want a conversion factor that involves moles and grams. Okay, over here, it looks like the one we want to use. Okay, step three, set up the calculations so the units cancel. All right, so I got to use these, set it up so that my units cancel. So I'm going to want moles down here, so my units of moles cancel. All right, and I'm going to want grams up there. All right, my units cancel. Okay, step four here. Solve the problem, which becomes 7.6 times 55.85 divided by 1, all right, which is equal to 424.46 grams of iron. Okay, hopefully you got that right. All right, let's try some more. All right, so how many moles are in a 42.7 gram sample of sulfur? Okay, so let's work through our steps here. Start with what the problem gives you, 42.7 gram sample of sulfur, okay? Step two, what are the conversion factors? Well, the question here involves moles and grams. So I want the conversion factor that uses moles and grams. It looks like this is the one we want, okay? Now we can set up the calculation so that the units cancel. So I have grams up top, I want grams down here. So our units cancel. And the question is asking for moles, which should go on top here. Okay. Our units cancel. And now we can solve the problem. So 42.7 times 1 divided by 32.07 gives us 1.3 moles of sulfur. Okay. Hopefully you got that right. All right. So practice here. Go ahead and pause this while you work on this. When you're ready to check your work, hit play here. Okay. All right, let's see how you did. So before 1982, pennies were made of pure copper. How many copper atoms are in a pre-1982 penny with a mass of 3.1 grams? All right, so let's work through our steps. Start with what the problem gives us. All right, 3.1 grams is the mass of a penny, copper penny. All right, step two, what are the conversion factors? So this question involves atoms, okay, and grams. Which one of these involves atoms and grams. Well, it looks like this one on the far right. That's the one we want. Okay, so now we can set up the calculations so that the units cancel. Okay, I have grams up here when I want grams in the bottom. And the question is asking for atoms, which should always go on the top right hand section here. And our units cancel. Okay, and now we can solve the problem. All right, so 3.1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 63.55 gives us 2.9 times 10 to the 22nd copper atoms. Okay, hopefully you got that right. Let's try one more. So go ahead and pause this while you work on this. All right, when you're ready to check your work, go ahead and hit play. Okay, so let's see how you did. A nickel coin contains 0 0.085 moles of the element nickel. How many nickel atoms are in a nickel coin? All right, working through our steps, so let's start with what the problem gives us. 0 0.085 moles of nickel, okay. Step two, what are our conversion factors? So this question though is using moles, okay, and atoms. Which one of our conversion factors involves moles and atoms? Well, the middle one here. Good. Now we can move on to the next step here. Set up our calculations so the units cancel. Okay, so moles are here. We're going to want moles down here, so our units cancel. And the question is asking for nickel atoms, which will go on top. All right, now our units cancel. And we can proceed on to the next step. Step four, okay, go ahead and solve the problem. Okay, 0 0.085 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, all divided by one, 
gives us 5.1 times 10 to the 22nd nickel atoms. All right, hopefully you got that right. And now we can summarize, okay? So go ahead and complete your summary for 20 points. Go ahead and pause this while you work on this and we'll see you next time.